Hi everybody, it's Franny and we're back with the 3-2 Carrera project. This is going to be one of the last episodes in this series and since we've got pretty much everything back together on the car, I think it's time to clean the car and give it a real shine. So this is going to be a detailing episode. I've got a lot of cool products I want to show you and we're going to give a try. Also, we're going to be doing a two bucket wash on the car, completely wash the car. Just a lot of work. The car has been sitting for like a year and a half or so indoors. It's not only dirty, it's just pretty much dusty. A two bucket wash is just a fancy way of saying that you have one bucket for suds and another bucket for rinsing. And the idea is that as you're taking the dirt off the car with the suds, you really don't want to wash out your mitts and things back in your sudsy water. That's supposed to be your clean water. So you have a separate bucket to rinse everything off and get all the dirt off of it. And then you go back into your suds and then you go back and wash the car. And in theory, less dirt means less scratches. Your wax will hold up better. I do have a few tools I want to show you. I have a foam can in here. These things are pretty cool. And also this guy. Now this is an undercarriage washer and it's really, really handy here in Colorado in the winter. This thing is pretty low profile, can get underneath the cars and just spray down the bottom of the cars and any of that salt and grit and all that crap that sticks to the bottom bottom of the car will come right out and it helps reduce the corrosion on the bottom of your car keep the bottom of your car clean since our engine is so nice and clean and I really don't want to spend the time detailing the engine I'm going to throw a towel over it just to kind of keep it dry because there will be a bit of water that will rain down through the vents here and through the tail up here so I just want to keep it kind of dry so I don't have to spend a bunch of time detailing it I'm just going to throw this in here like that and that certainly should help. All right, well, let me get my buckets full and we'll get started with the wash. I like to do my wheels first after I've foamed the entire car. Now these wheels are old and a little bit sensitive. This bit here is actually anodized and this part is painted, but it's like 1986 paint. Normally I use something like this, a pretty intense wheel cleaner that gets rid of iron and all that. And this works great for modern wheels, but on these older wheels, they're a little more sensitive and you have to be a little more careful with them. So I've got this product here, which is an iron removing spray clay and it's designed specifically for paint. So it's not going to be quite as harsh on the wheels. I still have my two bucket system here where I've got a rinse bucket and I also have have my foam bucket here. So let me go ahead and spray this down and we'll see how it works. Now we have to let this sit for about five minutes or so, or but they tell you specifically not to let it dry. In that time, let's go ahead and do the other wheels and get them done as well so they'll be ready. With these iron removing products, we should see a bit of red and we can see it coming out all over the place. That means it's doing its job. I don't want to let it sit too long. And they're pretty dirty, so our rinse bucket is great for cleaning this bit off before we put it back into our sudsy bucket. It just helps keep the sudsies a bit cleaner. And look at that river of red. Oh my gosh, that's great. That means it's removing the iron. So this is awesome. It's really doing a great job cleaning. And look at this rinse bucket. Look how dirty it is already. And we haven't even gotten through the first wheel. That's what you don't want in your soap bucket. Another product I really like is Adam's Tire and Rubber Cleaner. This just does a really good job at cleaning the rubber, it makes it look brand new actually. It's not a protectant, it's definitely just a cleaner, but it works really well. This is a great time, let's go ahead and get the rubber on our wheel. And even this turns color a little bit as it's working. And our last step is just to rinse. Now 
Well, that looks pretty good, but that's about as good as you're gonna get with the wheel on the car. And I think it looks pretty good. Let's move to the other three and get them done. With the wheels all done, we're gonna get to the car and we're gonna start at the top and work our way down, which means we're gonna start with the top. Now you're probably wondering, you know, I'll bet all that soap has already dried on the car because we did a full foam cannon on the whole car. And yes, it has. And there's a reason for that because the soap will never create water spots. It protects the car when you're washing and there's water splashing from cleaning the wheels and everything else. It kind of protects the car. So I always do that first and that's why. It also gives us a layer of soap on top here, which is going to help. I've got a bucket here with just simple car shampoo and a very soft natural bristle brush. And we're going to work it into the top and clean the entire top. For the plastic window in the back, I want to use a small little microfiber towel. It's much better and much easier than the bristles and won't scratch. Now I know it's really tempting to rinse off the top with the power washer at this point, but we really don't want to do that. Same reason, we just don't want to get a lot of clean water all over the car. That may sound funny, but that's how we get water spots. We're going to rinse the car at the very end and then we'll immediately dry the entire car. So we leave everything soapy until we're ready for that final rinse. All right, well, we're actually ready now to wash the car. I know that seemed like that was a lot of fuss to get to this point, but next, we're gonna go ahead and wash the actual car. Got my two buckets here. I've got a big, huge microfiber mitt. These things are wonderful. They hold quite a bit. And this is the grit guard I'm using for the rinse bucket. It has this kind of additional 45 degree part on it that's great for scrubbing. It works awesome. We can get into some of these detail spots with our brushes. And a nice uh, natural bristle brush like this works great for these bellows here. And this bigger brush is super duper soft and we can use it on some of the rubber parts and maybe some of these rash guards underneath here. I wouldn't necessarily use a brush like this on open paint like this because you've got a good chance you could scratch the paint, but it works great for all the rubber bits. Well, we're finally ready to rinse the car, but before we rinse it, since it's the very last step, we're gonna need to dry the car immediately afterwards. So you wanna have your drying towels at the ready. And what I've got here are the rapid dry towels from Nick Murray. So if you haven't checked these out, go to his channel. I'll link it down below and pick up these towels from him. These things are awesome. They were great. You can dry the entire car with like one towel. We ordered a couple of them. I haven't even had to pull this one out of the pack. Packaging. All right, well, before we actually wash the top of the car, I want to show you that undercarriage washer. It's really, really cool. So we'll go ahead and wash the underside of the car, rinse it first, and then we'll get to rinsing the rest of the car. This is my rig. 
The wheeled washer here comes with a bunch of extensions and you may have to get one specifically for your particular power washer. No problem at all, that's what that last little extension is. Look at that, huh? Boy, that's really something. This thing is really something. Now it is sort of getting a little hung up almost in the center of the car. So I'll probably go around on the other side and run it a little bit on the other side. But wow, it does a great job. I'm seeing a lot of dirt and a lot of stuff falling down from the bottom of the car. All right, now we're finally ready to rinse the car. We're gonna rinse from the top down. I'm gonna start my drawing from the top down, but I wanna make sure I hit the parts that are in the sun first, cause they're gonna dry the quickest. And as for the convertible top, we're gonna to dry that off last. If your top is well treated, this is all it takes just to drag it across the top and the top will be completely dry. With all the painted surfaces on the car done and the top done, next we're gonna do the wheels. Now's a good time to get to the door jams. They'll be all wet in here and you wanna go ahead and dry them off. Hopefully they won't be too dirty, but that's one of the reasons we're doing them last because this towel is gonna to go right into the wash when we're done with it. Well, you're probably wondering, why didn't I do the door jams when I had all the soap out and all the brushes and such? Because for me, it's just too easy to get water inside the car and on the carpet and stuff, and I really don't want to do that. So generally for those areas, I do them by hand with a little bit of all-purpose cleaners where I can control it a little bit better. And I think you can get it cleaner as well because there's a lot of little nooks and crannies, and sometimes you even have to go at it with a little bit of rubbing compound to really get it perfectly clean. Well, let's see how we did with our towel over the engine. Oh yeah, I think I think that helped a bit. Yeah, towel's pretty wet, actually. It's very wet. Well, that's awesome. Kept our engine nice and dry. I don't have to fuss with it. Everything looks great back here. Well, let's see how we are under here. A little bit wet. Kind of expected a bit of that. Try this off before it goes crazy. And up it goes and, wow. Looks really dry under here. That's awesome. Yay. Just a little bit maybe around the edges. The car has been completely cleaned, but I still want to strip it of any remaining wax or any type of coating that's on the car because I'm going to do a quick two-stage buff. And I know there's really nothing very quick about that. I just want to go through and get some of the surface scratches off. And if I don't clean the car with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to start with, it can really load up the pads quite a bit and make that buffing process a little more difficult. So I'm just using this 91% isopropyl alcohol. It won't hurt the paint, but it will clean the paint completely. So I'm going to go through and wipe down the entire car. Our next step after going over the car completely with isopropyl alcohol is going to be to clay it. I like to keep the clay in some hot water. It makes the clay so much easier to work with. It's so much smoother and easier. Now, if you're wondering, well, do I really need to clay my car or not? It feels pretty smooth. I can't really tell if it needs to be clayed or not. A really easy way to test 
best is grab a little bit of plastic bag here. It's just a little piece of plastic and then run it over the surface of the paint and listen. Can you hear that sort of squeaky noise? There, and it sounds really rough. That means we still need to clay. It means that we've got embedded contaminants in the paint and we need to lift them out and that's what the clay does. Claying is actually super simple to do. It seems really too easy for what you get out of it. It's actually pretty cool. I have a lubricant here that I use. This is just Adam's waterless car wash and really nothing special. And you just sort of wet the area. Make sure it's nice and wet like that. Take your clay, just kind of get it nice and flat. This clay is pretty warm, so there we go. And then you just rub it over the surface. That's really all you do. It seems too easy, really, to be honest. It's just, just kind of rub it up and down like this. And then take a look at your clay. It's not, this is clay is blue. I have some white clay, which is actually better because you can actually see all the dirt that it's pulling up better. But I can still see it in here. Uh, it's definitely darker and definitely has some crud in it. So what we do is we then pull our clay, fold it over, each, uh, over itself, kind of work it in like that and flatten it back out again. And that gives us a nice new area we can work with. And if it starts to get too hard, it's kind of cold out today. It's like almost 50 degrees or something. And the clay will start to cool down pretty quickly and get a little bit hard. So if you have to, just throw it back in your warm water. Then just come back with a very nice, uh, this is a brand new microfiber towel and just wipe your area down. It feels so much smoother. Let me get that plastic again and see how we did. Okay, here we go. Almost no noise at all. Feels very smooth. Yep. None of that squeaking noise. It's pretty amazing. It's really neat. It's so simple. You just take a quick little plastic bag, run it over some of your paint and say, oh, oh, yeah, I definitely need to do that. Break out the clay, just lubricate it, wipe it down and boom, it's super simple. And it does remove a lot of the contaminants. And this is always a great start before you buff and polish. It's just one less thing for the buffer to deal with. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and clay the entire car and then we will move on to the buffing. With the claying done on the car, it's time to start the buffing. But before we do that, I wanted to have a little chat about the paint on this car. I'd say it's probably maybe a seven out of 10. Part of it has been repainted sort of diagonally across the car because I can tell it's got clear coat on it. And on this side of the car, there's no clear coat. And the paint job that was done was pretty awful, actually. I don't think it's even exactly the right color. It's kind of a mess. So with all the work we were doing on the car, we did have a guy out and had him look through the car from stem to stern and ask him what it would cost to get this repainted. And he said, you know, if you're gonna do all the work of pulling mirrors off, door handles, even the windshield out and all that, if I did all that work, the paint job would still be about 10 grand. And we were trying to decide, we really wanna spend 10 grand on a new paint Paint job. This one looks pretty good and with our roads around here and the gravel and the salt and everything it's just really rough on these paint jobs anyways and the nicer the car looks probably the less chance we'll actually get out and drive it. So we decided to skip that and not pay the $10,000. So I'm just going to kind of pretty up the paint as it is. We're going to buff it. We're going to do some other stuff to it but it just doesn't really fit with this car. With all that said, let's go ahead and get to the buffing and see if we can pretty this up a little bit. I'm gonna be using my Flex Orbital Buffer here. This thing works pretty well. It's a kind of a beast actually, pretty heavy. And it's got a big over five inch pad on this thing. I mean, it's almost six inch pad on this thing. It's pretty big. So for the smaller areas, I have a little smaller version of this thing, like a four inch from, this one's from Adams actually. It's a swirl killer. This thing works really great for smaller spots like down in here where the big buffer is just way too big. Now, as far as compounds go, I normally use Adam's correcting polish, but I'm all out actually, which is kind of a bummer and, and kind of forgot about that. So I do have some older stuff that I got from chemical guys. So a two part buff does take a decent amount of time. It'll probably take several hours to get this car completely buffed, but when it's done, it hopefully should look a lot nicer.
One of the reasons why I like to compound is just for a good cleaning. See the difference? I went through and did that swath with the little swirl killer there and look at the rest I have to do by hand because I can't get the polisher in there. And you can see my edge there as well. It's just definitely very, very dirty. It's just dirt in the paint. And that's what this compound really takes out and makes such a difference. It didn't look that bad, but it looks so much better once it's been polished. Well, that's our first stage buff complete. I'm going to do a second stage and I'm just going to be using finishing polish and a white pad, Adam's white pads. Now this doesn't really have any cutting to it really to speak of. All it's going to do is just bring back a really nice shine. And the other thing it's going to do is take off some of the haze that we got from the first stage buffing actually, which is a bit of compound, a bit of this and a bit of that. But this is actually just going to go really fast. So I'm not going to bother you with that and we'll come back and I'll show you what we're gonna do for the paint. The second buffing is complete and I think the car is looking really good. What I wanna to use to protect the paint is this. So this is from 303 and this is graphene nano spray. So this is supposed to be next gen after ceramic coating. It's not hard like ceramic coating but it's supposed to protect it better than ceramic coating. I guess we'll see, huh? I've been wanting to try this out and test this out. So this is a perfect uh, opportunity to do that. Before I apply the 303 graphene, I'm going to run through the entire car really quick and wipe it down with some Q2M prep. This is from Gion or Gion. Uh, it's, this is what you would use if you were gonna ceramic coat the car. You'd go ahead and prep it with this. It just gets rid of all the buffer stuff and the schmutz that's on the car from buffing it and all that so that our new 303 3 graphene can really take hold a little bit better. I tested this a little bit off camera on the front quarter panel, but let me show you how this stuff works. It's kind of interesting. So just apply it with a microfiber applicator, really, or a microfiber towel works. That's fine. I just want you to spray it on there. You coat it in a crosshatch pattern and then allow it to dry. And that is a bit different than ceramic coating. So if you've ever done ceramic, you'll, you're kind of at this stage, you're all ready to go and use the same sort of applicators, put a few drops on there, wipe it down, but you don't let it dry. You come back and you look for sort of a rainbowy haze to it. And then that's sort of your signal that you're ready and you use a microfiber and take it off, but it'll still sort of drag a little bit. It's definitely not dry. But with this stuff, they want you to let it set up first. That's kind of interesting. So they want you to let it dry. So I'm just kind of continuing through the car. Now it's interesting that the pad looks a bit dirty actually. And that's because the spray is actually kind of, it's got like this black, I would assume it's the graphene in it. And look at this. Do you see that? Isn't that interesting? It's got sort of a dark tinge to it, which is kind of interesting. That's really weird. All right, so we just kind of continue on here. Then in our cross patch pattern here. So similar to the way you would just apply a regular wax, really very similar. I was reading the back here and it says it has a year plus of protection. So that's a really good thing. It says it lowers the surface temperature. That's interesting. I don't know how it would do that, but whatever. It reduces water spotting. That would make sense. Um, high water contact angle and it sheds water well. Okay, great. Easy to use. Black paint, no problem. Direct sunlight. You can use this in direct sunlight. 
So, okay. And it says, great for use on paint, chrome, wheels, trim, glass, and vinyl wraps. So, hmm, what does trim mean? Does that mean plastic trim, rubber trim? Yeah, I don't really know. Hmm, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Well, we've waited about 15 minutes or so. I've gone through the entire car. Let's go ahead and buff this off and see, see what it looks like. Now, I think it's coming off okay. Now, I'm almost just feeling it more than anything else. I've got a lot of lights in here, so I can kind of get light at different angles and take a look and see if we've got it off. And I think we do. I think so. And I kind of just rub until it stops dragging. It does require a little effort to get it off, though. Well, I think I have it all off. My only real clue is that it's actually a little dark, and so when I wipe it off, I can kind of see it against this white paint. I would imagine on pretty much any other color, it might be a little difficult. So you're just gonna have to go by how it feels and whether it's dragging as you're, you know, as you're wiping it off. I can still feel a little bit of drag, but I did read online that this stuff can sort of feel like that a little bit as you're taking it off. Well, it certainly is nice and shiny. It looks great. I know it's difficult to tell on the video just what it really looks like. It's just, it's so hard, but it seems to look pretty good. I'm looking at the lights and the reflection of all the lights that I've got here. And yeah, it looks pretty sweet. All right, well, let me continue around the car and take this all off and um, we'll see where we are. As I continued buffing the car, I did notice on the left-hand side where we have single part paint that it was a little more difficult to get off than it was on the other side with the clear coat. I thought that was kind of interesting. It does say you don't have to wait to get the car wet, so it can go right out into the rain or get wet immediately. And that's different than ceramic coating. Ceramic coating takes about 24 hours or so to really set. I like to let it sit almost two days or so just to make sure it's really locked in before you get it wet. So that's one benefit, I suppose, is that if you're thinking it's gonna rain or whatever within you know, a short period of time after you've done the car, this might be a good product. But you know, I'm almost thinking at this point, with all the prep work we did, we were ready to ceramic coat, and ceramic is the same application method, but it comes off really easily and is a lot easier to work with, I think. And I bet you ceramic would probably last a little longer. I don't know. It's hard to say, but this is, well, I have been working on this quarter panel for quite a while back here, and I still can feel it dragging. It just doesn't seem to want to come off all the way. Oh well. Well, I'll just continue on. So here, check this out. This is the right rear quarter panel here. And look at that. Isn't that something? Wow, that is quite the shine. I think this is probably the best panel on the entire car, weirdly, but it looks great. And this is a bit of what I've been talking about. Do you see these little spots here? And here, this one there, there. It looks like there's just a little bit of dirt on the car. <laughs> it looks like that's actually the graphene. There it goes and you just wipe it away. Isn't that interesting? It must have just sort of bubbled up a little bit there. Huh. Well, that really is interesting. What do you think? How do you think it turned out? It's pretty shiny. It feels nice and smooth, but of course we went through a lot of work to get there. I don't know about the graphene stuff. I'll let you know how it holds up uh, in the future and see if this stuff breaks down. But from what I've read and what I've seen on other YouTube videos, it seems to last pretty well. If you've had any experience at all with the graphene sprays or any of the graphene coatings, let me know down in the comments and let me know your experience with it especially if you have any experience with the 303 brand, but any of the others, Adams or any of the other graphene sprays, I'm really curious as to what you think of this.
this stuff. With the paint all sorted, next I'm gonna get to the rubber on the outside of the car here. I'm gonna use my 303 protectant and see how that holds up. I'm really curious how this works outside, if it holds up at all or whatever. So let's give this a try. Now in these pillows here, uh, they're such a pain. You can, they're really hard to get to with a microfiber. So a lot of times a brush is actually easier to work with. And with all this rubber on the outside of the car, you really want something that's got some UV protection. So our 303 does, and also Adam's VRT does as well. I've used this quite a bit. I'm actually really happy with this product. It's a really good rubber and vinyl protectant. I'm just giving this a try. I'm really curious as to, I've had so many people write in, oh, why don't you use 303? Why don't you, okay, well, I'll give it a try and always like to test out new stuff. So we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm gonna get to the rest of the rubber on the car and wipe it down with our 303. Well, next is the glass. And I'm not gonna lie, not my favorite thing to work with on the car. Just, it seems like it's impossible to get glass absolutely spotless and clean. And I've watched a zillion videos, I'm sure everyone has, and it just doesn't seem to work that well, whatever I try. I have learned one thing, that you do need to actually clean the glass. That's super important because what you're seeing on the glass, that haze, is just the dirt you didn't get off. So the glass does have to be absolutely spotless. So I've got Adam's Polishes, his glass cleaner here. It's kind of as good as any. It works pretty well, I think, just at least to get the, the grime off. Also, we'll be using our friend the clay bar, actually. Clay is great for cleaning windows. It gets off bug, dead bugs and all sorts of stuff off of it. It works really well for that. And I have two different towels to use on the glass. This is actually a glass microfiber towel. It has virtually no nap at all to it. And I guess it kind of works. I mean, they're, they're Okay, but they're designed specifically for glass. Whereas the big fluffy towels tend to just sort of move stuff around. Uh, they don't seem to clean quite as well, but when you get done and your window is basically dry, what I like to do is then go back with one of the regular microfiber towels and then polish it or buff it. So any of that film that's still there will actually come off with dry with the microfiber towel. So it works really well. So you don't use any liquid with it. You just go back and just buff it dry. And that seems to be about the best I can do. And the other thing that I think is important is instead of going around in circles, I think it's always better on glass to go back and forth and do a bit of a crosshatch pattern. I think it helps break up the streaking actually. So I think it works much better. side of the windshield is basically the same process with a couple of small caveats. One, we don't spray the inside of the windshield with our window cleaner. We always spray the towel first and then wipe it. We don't want that raining down on top of our dash. Second thing is there's kind of a cool tool that you can get that looks like this that's designed specifically to get down into the base of the windows here. And on this car, it's not quite so bad, but the Ferrari has a really high binnacle on it. And so does the i8 for that matter. And it makes it really, really difficult to get down in those corners, those little nooks and crannies. And this thing can be very helpful for that. And finally, it's actually easier to do the opposite side of the windows from where you're sitting. Sounds kind of funny, but if you want to do the driver's side, you wash it from the passenger side. Well, I think that's about as clean as I'm going to get it. I was thinking about what to put on the windshield just to sort of protect it a little bit. And then I, I remembered 303, this graphene stuff. It says on the back here, great for use on paint, chrome, wheels, trim, glass, and vinyl wraps. And I thought, you know what? I wonder what it'd be like on the windshield. So I don't know, I'm hoping it's gonna be super hydrophobic. So maybe that's actually really cool so that when it really starts to rain, your windshield wipers don't have to work nearly as hard. Anyway, let's give it a try, see how it goes. Well, that turned out pretty sweet. It looks good and clean, and I think with that graphene on there, it should be pretty cool when it rains. All right, so I just need to do the rest of the glass, and I'm not gonna bore you with that. Now, with all that work on the car, and the car looking pretty sweet, you're probably thinking, hold on, wait a minute, I think there's one other detail. What could that be? Hmm. 
Yeah, these things look like crap, don't they? They're just, oh, they just, they're old, they're dirty, and they look, look like crap. Well, I have a bit of a surprise for you. Check this out. Well, what do you think of that? Those look awesome, don't they? Well, these are actually the summer wheels and I ceramic coated them. So I went and buffed them and ceramic coated them so that they'll stay nice and clean. I think they look pretty awesome. So way better than the winter wheels. And it's so nice to have the car back on the summer rubber instead of the winter rubber, which has been, oh my gosh, at least 18 months, if not longer on those winter wheels. What do you think? Wow, I think it looks amazing. Boy, the car really pops. Now it was a huge amount of work. I spent three days on it, but I think it was totally worth it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then do that now because, oh my gosh, we've got another video coming out in this series, the last one, and it's all the money we spent on the car. And I don't even know the numbers, so it's <laughs> This is going to be quite an episode. And then after that, we're going to be getting to the Ferrari and working on that car. Thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.